So let us get started. Diamonds in the Rough, indie RPGs that you should play. Uh, first off, I'd like to go ahead and go with some definitions. If I can get this thing to work again. Oh no. There we go, all right. So for the main part, this is going to be about RPG Maker games. Uh, games made in that engine. Um, so there are a couple of very specific definitions for a thing. So RM, RPG Maker, um, we're mainly going to be talking about 2000 and 2003. So 2K, 2K3. Um, whenever I mention something like a character set or a Kara set or a chip set, that's just like the different sprite sets or tile sets that are used for the game. Um, RTP is something that I do mention quite a bit, especially for some of these earlier games. It's the runtime package. It's stuff that comes bundled with RPG Maker. So it's just like all these default resources that came with it. And a rip is just uh, stuff that's pulled from a commercial game. So like say someone went onto the Spriders resource or they did it themselves and they actually pulled um, the, the Narsh set from Final Fantasy VI or they took um, the stuff from Gren Hill and Suikoden or something like that. So here's what we won't be talking about. Um, we won't be talking about games like Mad Father, Ib, Witch's House, Corpse Party things. They're all made in RPG Maker, but they're not RPGs. They're horror games. They're great games. Definitely give some of them a try, but they're not RPGs, so we won't be talking about them at this panel. Um, we won't be talking about games made in RMXP or later, so no MV games, no VX Ace or anything like that. Um, there are some great games like To the Moon made in that, Quintessence. Um, there are a couple of remakes of some of the older RPG Maker games. Like I know Avion is a remake of the old Laxus Power games, and that's made in some of the later makers, but we're not talking about that, and we're not talking about Laxus Power. <laughs> we're also not going to be talking about games made, not made in RPG Maker. So there's things like Lie Eat, which was made in Wolf RPG Editor. Great game, but we're not talking about it. Or Barkley Shut Up and Jam Gaiden. Uh, there was an RPG Maker version of it that never came out, but it was made in Game Maker. So, unfortunately, no Hoop Sparkly Saga tonight. So, a little bit about me. Um, hi, I forgot to introduce myself at the start. My name's Shannon Harley, Sweetie Ash. Um, I was also known by Trans2 in the RPG Maker community. I've been in the community since about 2003 on various forums, gaming world and such. Uh, I was an administrator and a moderator on a bunch of different RPG Maker sites like Cobra's Realm, um, Lunatic Gaming, Omega Gate Sanctum, and a couple of others that like Monkey Productions I think was another one, a bunch of little independent groups. Uh, and I'm a staff writer uh, for RP Gamer, which is the, one of the larger websites for writing about RPGs on the internet. So without further ado, we're going to start with a real heavy hitter, A Blurred Line by Lysander86. Now this is, let me get my notes out here because it's been a while. It's considered one of the best RPG Maker games out there. Most of the rankings that I've ever seen have made it one of the best RPG Maker games. Um, it's a dystopian sci-fi game where you control a man suspected of murder and a man hellbent on capturing him. Corporate military politics ensue, and Karsh, who is the man chasing your main character, Talon, learns of the hypocrisy about his employers in the military and such. It was supposed to have a sequel called A Line's End, or just Line's Ends, excuse me, that was supposed to conclude the whole story with Talon and Karsh and, um, and all them. It actually started as a, fir the first game was called The Line Narrows. And then eventually, this version here, a blurred line 2.1, uh, combined both the line narrows and a blurred line. Uh, line Zen is considered one of the greatest vaporwave, va vaporware games we're still waiting for. And it's unlikely we'll be able to see it because no one knows where Lysander went. Uh, there are some really neat gameplay mechanics. And as you can see, it's the default RPG Maker 2000 system. Um, you were able to use your main character to, and you're fighting in different areas, to absorb auras from enemies. And this allows you to learn different kinds of skills. So you can kind of customize your character to your liking. Uh, you can also go to basically everywhere from the start. There's some little bit of uh, railroading. Uh, and the choices that you make in the game with dialogue options through different NPCs and some of the other playable characters does determine how Talon gets through. Uh, his plight in the game. Now next we have 
a real big classic, Legion Saga. This is actually a trilogy of games for RPG Maker 2000 made by um, Camus. And this is basically, well, for lack of better words, it's a blatant sweet code in Wavroff. <laughs> but it's really good. It is one of the very first completed RPG Maker games to come out in the Western community, even before a blurred line. And it follows Duran, I believe his name is. Are you, is he the Duran or? Du Duran. Duran. Duran? It's been a while. There are three different games that function very much like Sweet Coden. There are three different battle styles. You have a normal battle system. There's a dual battle system that functions like a rock, paper, scissors, very much like Sweet Coden. And as you can see from the screenshots, there is also a war battle, just like Sweet Coden. Uh, all three games made in RPG Maker 2000. They, he was attempting to make a remake for RPG Maker 2003 uh, of the first Legion Saga that had a demo, never fully finished. Currently, there's actually someone making a remake of all three of them in RPG Maker MV called Legion Saga DX. And it's supposed to come out sometime next year, but we'll certainly see what happens. All right, next we have a bit of a newer game, but still relatively old, Alter Alia Genesis. This is a game by Neoc. Let me get to my notes here. And most people remember it, especially on Gaming World and in screenshot topics, for being a Valkyrie profile-esque kind of exploration system. Most RPG Maker games are top-down, kind of grid-based movement, say like a Zelda one. But this was a side-scrolling game. And there was puzzle elements involving that. There was a little bit of platforming. It was absolutely neat. Um, the story and combat are really interesting. Uh, you have uh, an AP system that you function on instead of MP, so all your actions consume different amounts of AP that you can you gain throughout the battle through defending and certain things. Um, there's custom resources for basically everything. There's almost no rips. There is almost no RT. There is almost no RTP besides maybe some sound effects, and it's very very well illustrated. Uh, there was a little bit after my time. When I left the community around, around 2009, uh, when I was in college, but everything I've heard about this game has said nothing but good things about it. Most of the rankings have it as either number one, number two, or even just barely number three on their rankings. So next we got, we're, we have all the runs before this have been completed games. Even though Lines End never came out, A Blurred Line is still a completed game. We're going to move on to something more of a demo to show the power of RPG Maker, because usually you see just kind of generic RPGs. We have Uden Yamalrador by Sovin Jedi, who I found out recently is now currently working for Adult Swim Games. So it's actually really cool seeing members of the RPG Maker community move into an actual uh, job within the industry. Uh, this is kind of Earthbound-esque in its uh, ideas. It has you playing as um, Mike, who is kind of like a lone wolf type, you know, do doesn't really want to associate with much of anything. And it turns out that there is a intergalactic war happening that has just reached Earth. And it's up to him to try and defend his town a little bit from this. We don't really know much about it because it's only a demo. It's kind of a tech demo. And so an action battle system, so like a Zelda or like um, a Ease game in the original, in RPG Maker 2003. Now with later games, uh, uh, makers, it's a lot easier because they're scripting, so you can very easily make an action RPG. But with the very basic coding, as it may be, that you had in the original RPG makers, something like this was unheard of. And he was able to go ahead and do this. So there is a demo. There's just a demo for this. It is definitely worth checking out. Speaking of custom systems, we move on to Legend of the Philosopher's Stone by, hang on one second, by Nemesis29. And this also is nothing but custom systems. There are a decent amount of rips in it. Um, you can see the Tales of Fantasia uh, map border there. So we've got that. Uh, and a couple of Suikoden chips, I believe, uh, as well as first seed material uh, stuff. 
but the battle system and the menu system are all completely custom. There is nothing attached to the original engine in there. So you, are, you end up being able to create just whatever you want using the limited coding you have. Uh, it still stands as one of the pinnacles of the capabilities of RPG Maker. The story is Marge and his companions are traveling the ruined world of Terra to find their way home. And you just basically follow them through that. It's been a while, I'm sorry. Their skill learning reminiscent of a Tales game, uh, or sorry, a Trails game, where you gain skills from orbs that you gain experience through using uh, um, in battle. And instead of being a, a straight up turn-based game or an active time battle, it's a CR system, so kind of like a weight, uh, a, um, a stamina-based system, excuse me, kind of like a chrono cross. <laughs> so next we have one of my absolute favorite games. Um, it's called Sunset Over Imdahl by Tio Matheldon, or Matheline, excuse me. And this is, it's, an RPG by the thinnest definition. It is mostly an adventure puzzle game. Uh, there is eventually like a little bit of an action battle near the end. But you follow the story of Lon, who is basically you find him in a ruined town in the middle of winter. This town has been ravaged by a plague after being under siege for a year. And a man appears to him and says, I have the power to help you save your town. Of course, he accepts and travels back to spring. And you go through the story of finding out, OK, how did this plague start? How can I save my town from the siege? It all is uh, put against these absolutely gorgeous backdrops that Tio designed himself. And you can just you know, navigate that whole entire thing, learning about all the people of the town. And it goes through each of the seasons. And one of the really cool things about it is that each of the seasons uses a bit of Vivaldi's The Four Seasons. So you have this kind of attachment to it in a musical sense as well. Uh, let's see. It just, it just really, really adds another layer to, to the game. Now, going on to another heavy hitter, we have The Way. The Way is a six-part series made by Loon Kalasari. Uh, yeah, it looks a little rough, but it is still considered narratively to be one of the best RPG Maker 2000 games out there. You follow Rue, who is an adventurer traveling along The Way, um, trying to gain whatever power lies at the end of it. You do, you know, you meet various characters throughout, end up finding about this dark, mysterious power that lies at the end of the way. The really cool thing about it is the plunge system. It is a little bit of a, um, a mini game. That's a rock, paper, scissors system. Excuse me. And, you know, it just has, it has a bit of a strategic value to, uh, uh, element to it that is really, really fun. There's also a lot of backdrops made in Maya that are a little more parallax than, um, than a lot of other games that just use straight up chips or whatever like that. Um, it is all available. All six episodes are complete. And definitely give it a shot. And going back to a demo, we're going to go a little bit out of uh, the United States to Germany for a game called Versalbor. This one was also just a demo. It's also fully custom systems like Legend of the Philosopher's Stone was. And it is extremely fluid. It is extremely fun. Really cool uh, thing about Versalbor is that the guy who made it actually went on to found Rocketfish Games, uh, rather, sorry, Radical Fish Games, which made CrossCode, which is an action RPG that recently came out for Steam. And little Easter egg I saw in early in the game, you actually do see a screenshot of Versalbor in it. So there's a little bit of a connection there. Uh, again, it is only a demo, and sadly, it is only in German. So you can kind of navigate a little bit the story. Unfortunately, I don't know enough German to tell you guys the story, and I was not able to find a synopsis anywhere. Uh, but it is definitely a very, very fun battle system. It's mapped 
absolutely beautifully. Uh, it's got custom characters, though a lot of the chips are ripped. Like we, uh, we have a Terra Enigma rip there. Uh, I believe a, I think that's for a seed material. So moving on to another one of my favorite, uh, favorite ones, we have Romancing Walker by Flair DB. This one is quite a bit different from the other ones. This one has a much more of an anime influence to it. It has all custom uh, portraits made all with all different sorts of fa uh, facial expressions to it and uh, cut-ins for all the battle animations. So it has that really, really neat touch that a lot of other RPG Maker 2000 games didn't really have. In this game, you follow Ryle, who's going your, your typical hero's journey uh, and also to help the, the hero flare. So a little bit of a self-insert, but um, you end up going, trying to help this hero or heroine as it may be to defeat the demon lord. And there's a lot of, of romance novel kind of stuff in it. There's, you know, you can't, every character besides Ryle is female, so it ends up being kind of like this Tenchi Muyo, Love Hina-esque kind of romp through things with a little bit of that comedic value to it. Um, and like those kind of things, eventually you build relationship with all the different characters through per, uh, different side quests. Uh, it's a bit Englishy, which is unfortunate, but it's uh, self-translated by the developer. And it is certainly a fun little game, and it is also complete. Next, we're going to move on to Demon Legacy and Phantom Legacy by Nightblade. Both of these games, um, you don't have to play Phantom Legacy to understand Demon Legacy, but they are very, very linked. Both of them uh, involve the Dark Shadow Shadar. No relation to the Ni no Kuni character. But he basically is a vengeful spirit who is trying to gain vengeance uh, against the main character of Slade. He's very, very, very well written. Uh, it's pretty much default systems. Um, we have the default RPG Maker 2000 battle system for both Demon Legacy and Phantom Legacy. Uh, you can gain, one of the characters can gain abilities from fighting in different locations, so like Mog and Final Fantasy VI gain different dances. Uh, the stories are really, the story and the characters are really where the first game shines as opposed to the gameplay. Uh, is extremely well written. There's a, some neat, um, kind of like Elder Scrolls-esque, like lying your way through, uh, like influencing your way through things. Uh, Phantom Legacy is still a little bit default, but there's a lot of sprite edits. Um, there's still rips. I remember seeing uh, the Chrono Trigger uh, prison from Guardia Castle, so you have a lot of that. It is a continuation of the first game, but you don't need to play them. You play as Nero, who is wrongfully accused, and also having to deal with Shadar, um, and Galhazar, Galhazad is another uh, character that is recurrent between the two of them, who is trying to defeat Shadar and rid the world of his evil. <coughs> Next up we have another custom system. Um, this is Kindred Saga. And it basically works more on like, a, a light, dark, balance system within the battle system. Uh, where's my kid inside of? It is by Q Heretic, which is one of the founding members of Gaming Ground Zero. Uh, it's really hard to find this game, unfortunately, now. There are a couple of repositories that do have it. Uh, it's a fully custom battle system. There are dual techs in it, so it's like a little bit like Chrono Trigger. And it's a sci-fi system uh, game, a lot like Final Fantasy VII. And you follow the main character Slain as he seeks to find a better life in the slums of a divided city, while also trying to find more about the dark magician spirit lurking in his dreams. It combines a lot of different elements that you might know from like more commercial games, and kind of makes a new package out of them. So you see a, uh, a lot of rips, which is pretty typical for RPG Maker games. Um, the battle system is fully custom. I don't remember if the menu system is custom. I don't believe it is, but definitely a fun battle system. Next, we go into something a little less dedicated to the systems and much, much, much more on the writing. This is Love and War Act One by Admiral Styles. 
and the writing is absolutely what makes this game shine. Almost every single bookcase has a book that you can read, and it's maybe five, eight, ten text boxes of well-written-out lore and other material about the locations, about characters, and all those other kinds of things. The actual gameplay and like the battle system is pretty, you know, basic RPG Maker 2000, but it's absolutely the story where this game shines. Um, there's voice acting for all the major scenes, which is really something else for an RPG Maker 2000 game. And the choices that the player makes affect the way the story runs out. Uh, you have the main character of Ryan, who is a soldier, and there's kind of like this tug and pull of two kingdoms trying to not really go to war with each other, but they're probably going to go to war with each other. And Ryan trying to vie for La Vie, who is the uh, main female protagonist. Now, Animal Styles has made a couple of other like visual novels starring in La Vie. Um, on his website, you can find a couple of them and see more of his writing and just how utterly fantastic it is. So you can't have an RPG Maker panel without mentioning at least one fan game. Whether it's a Tales game, whether it's uh, a game based on some other kind of property like Mario or anything. So we have Final Fantasy, Black Moon Prophecy, which is a Final Fantasy fan game by UPRC. It's actually good. It's, a, it's very, very well done. It's a lot of rips. I mean, you can see it's basically almost exclusively Final Fantasy for tile sets. But it's just, it actually, it actually has a, a decent story, which is very good. It's very reminiscent of Final Fantasy III and especially Final Fantasy IV with kind of like a, um, a dark lord kind of trying to take over the world as it may be. Um, you know, sort of like a Golbez, not really like a Golbez. And it's got really good characters, a decent plot. And the biggest thing, it actually has a functioning jump command. So like Kane in Final Fantasy IV or Freya in Final Fantasy IX could jump. And surprisingly, that's really, really hard to do in RPG Maker because you have to think about, okay, you have to hit the command, then you have to let the, let the engine know, okay, you have to wait this long while having everyone else still go and then say, okay, here's the target that they had chose by keeping that in a variable, come down, have the attack come down, whether you do it as a skill or whether you do it as another random roll on a variable, it's just, it's actually really complex, at least three tutorials on RPGMaker.net on how to make just a jump command. So the fact that they were able to do it is just, it's really, really neat. So up next we have uh, a game that I definitely remember from my, game, uh, my times at Gaming World. It is, uh, was made for the DBS coding competition. DBS stands for Default Battle System, so just straight up what the, make, the engine gives you. And this is called Balmond Cycle Part 1, The Messenger and the Heretic by Magi. If you know anything about Norse mythology, it's basically Norse mythology. You play as an Anheriar who is attempting to, uh, of, who is sent by Loki to locate various treasures throughout the world. It uses almost exclusively Rudo no Hijo, um, which is Treasure of the Rudra sprites and tile sets, uses them extremely well and is a very, very nuanced battle system that encourages you to not just mash the space bar and hit attack constantly. There are different field effects that can occur. Um, characters definitely have different skills. You can't just hit attack to make sure that, oh, the enemies are dead, and enemies are usually resistant to certain things and all, and all the different elements. The story is really good. It's Norse mythology, but it's very, very apparent that it is a part one. There is no part two, but 
the writing is pretty good. The characters have very solid personalities. They don't, they do develop a little bit, but because it is very definitely a part one, it doesn't really grow in terms. So up next is a very, very popular game as of recent, and it's Katona's Heroes Realm. This is a game that's very, very reminiscent of Dragon Quest III and Dragon Quest IV, where you have various different chapters that you go, to, go through, each with one specific hero. And you can also build a party of other jobs or classes around them. Um, each chapter has a different kind of thing. One of the very, I think the first one is Save the Children, which is almost exactly like Ragnar from Dragon Quest IV. And it's a very, very classic old school JRPG. There is not really a lot of frills and whist bells and whistles, you know, that make it more, more like something from the 2000s or anything. And even though the story is very generic, it's very, very well written. Uh, it's divided across five chapters. There are four heroes. And the fifth chapter kind of combines everything all together. The dungeons are actually pretty good. There's some decent puzzles. Everything is kind of varied. There's not like Brown Cave 1, Brown Cave 2, Underwater Section, Brown Cave 3. Yeah, everything has a real good theme around it. It's definitely absolutely worth at least one playthrough. But it does encourage multiple playthroughs because you can choose at least 22 job classes for your characters. So with the power of the maker, even though you can have really good games with the default systems, you can do some cool stuff with it besides like an action battle system or a custom battle system. You can make Fire Emblem. There's a tactical RPG made in RPG Maker 2000 called Aurora Wing by D Falcon. And yes, it's true that Enterbrain did release a tactical RPG Maker, but this is made in straight up RPG Maker. And the amount of variables and the custom menus you would have to do, things like coding accuracy, maybe a weapon, even a weapon triangle or anything like that is like Whoa, you, you did this? Uh, it basically is Fire Emblem. You know, there is that weapon triangle. It has a lot of that kind of political intrigue plot going on like a Fire Emblem, and it's written a lot like it. Um, it's still at least a try because of just how neat it is that they made a tactics game in a system made for turn-based RPGs. So up next we have... It's a little bit infamous, but it's also pretty good. It's called Legacies of Dundoran by Harmonic. This is one of, if not the longest, RPG Maker games out there. It's probably a good 20, 30 hours, whereas other RPG Maker games might be five, maybe 10 if you're lucky. You follow Tyrannos and his whole Karad as you go through, and it's kind of your generic save the world plot. Start out starts out with like warring kingdoms, and it eventually kind of explodes out. All custom music written by Harmonic, and it's one of the first games to really use MP3s within RPG Maker 2003, because earlier patches, and especially RPG Maker 2000, you could only use MIDIs, and sometimes you could use a wave or two, but you couldn't use MP3s until 2003. So he composed all the music, which is not bad. And he also made it so you have a skill tree, which is what we have right there on the right. And every character has their own unique skill tree that you can go through. So it adds that level of customization to each of the characters. It's mostly all RTP, uh, the runtime package. There's like the default dragon there. Uh, all the monsters there are packaged with the, with the engine. The, the bars are all from that. Uh, the characters are a little bit flat. They don't really grow per se. The writing's not really the strong suit of this game. It's certainly just the length and the amount of gameplay that you can get out of it. The dungeons are decent. So it's definitely worth at least one try. Up next we have Kinect Cypher Again by Brick Road. This game is for you if you love puzzles. The puzzle and dungeon design in this game is second to none. Every single dungeon has a very different kind of element to it. There's 
jumping puzzles, there's your generic switch puzzles, there's uh, block puzzles, there's connect the electrical signal puzzles, there's getting through the spikes in a certain way, there's a mine cart, there's all sorts of stuff and it's all so well coded and it makes you, makes you scratch your noggin. But the battle system is nothing to be scoff at either because there's some really unique kind of status effects and other sorts of things. Like one a good example I found was the one in the screenshot here of terror where a character just becomes completely unable to act and may even flee because they are just terrified of something. It might not even be in the battle. And there's all sorts of those little idiosyncrasies that each of the characters has that can cause different kinds of status effects. And the writing is actually not bad too. We have uh, one of my favorite characters in the, in the game, Caesar, who is the obligatory armor shop guy. And uh, I mean, I think you can tell from here, he is he's pretty great. So all the games that I've mentioned up till now have all been free. You can get them on RPGmaker.net or Queenscourt.org, which is another good resource, or other ways around the internet. So there are two more RPG Maker games that actually were commercially released on Steam that are both great games. And the first one is Helen's Mysterious Castle for RPG Maker 2000. Double check for you who made it. And it's by Satsu, published by Playism. And there, I can say nothing but positive things about the game. Custom menu, custom battle system. It may not be all um, R RTP stuff, especially from 2000 with like kind of the little chibi or spri uh, uh, face sprites and things like that. But everything about this game is just a joy to play. It, you have various weapons and armor that you can pick up. You can upgrade them using experience. You don't level up your actual character. There's a rock, paper, scissors uh, kind of thing that goes on in the battle system. You know, choosing whether you use attack, magic, or defend. All sorts of, the story is actually really cool because you're this mute protagonist who's trying to find out, okay, why am I here? What is going on? You just go, you just go adventuring against the, the behest of your caretaker. And you eventually find out that you're this chosen person who's supposed to save this floating continent. And you're like, Whoa, wait a sec. It is definitely worth the play. I think, I think not on sale, it's $6. And on sale, I mean, during the New Year's, New Year's sale, it's about a buck 19. So it's definitely a very, very good game. It's short. It's only about four or five hours, but it encourages multiple playthroughs because you can't get a true end until you do a second playthrough. But it's definitely a very, very fun game with a lot of really cool customizable elements. Um, that you can just get off of Steam. And finally we have RFL by Bad Luck and Stegosoft Studios. This is a game that I have a bit of a personal history with because a game that I was making using a similar chipset and character set was being, well I was working on it as around the time RFL was. RFL follows Lita Lakota who is just average everyday tomboy in the floating continent of Allura. And you eventually find out that there's this larger plot about bringing the floating islands down. That is basically your typical savior plot with this character. She finds a magical ring that allows her to activate these shrines to keep the, cities, the, the islands from falling. But there's vampires instead of your typical demons or what have you. And they're well-written characters. Every single character is very well-written. There are, it is default systems, a default menu system, a default battle system, but the battle system is very engaging. Every character is very unique in the way they fight. The battles, there's a little bit of strategy involved with all of them because all of them have different kind of AI based on your characters. Uh, the exploration is really nice. There's jumping, there's swimming, there's climbing. You can basically go most anywhere on Allura. And not just most anywhere in the map, you're able to just go wherever from the start of the game. It's completely non-linear, but you'll probably get your butt kicked because it's kind of like Dragon Quest. You go across the bridge, oh no, there's a soldier that kills you in two hits. 
And this game is available on Steam as well. I believe it is $10. It vaguely goes on sales. I think uh, it might be actually 15 But it's definitely, definitely worth a playthrough. It's beautifully, beautifully mapped. There's parallax effects. The story is great. The music's great. It doesn't use the Pirates of the Caribbean theme for the battle system anymore like it used to. <laughs> So definitely give that a shot. So those are the games that I think you guys should play. They're definitely great classics. Um, now all I want to know from you guys is, do any of you guys have experience with the community and any of the games that you think I have missed? Um, I do know there's things like Big Seca Monster's Tale that I didn't cover here, Sacred, um, uh, Sacred Tears True, which is also on Steam, which is a great game. and. Um, if anyone has any games that they know about that we didn't cover, you know, go ahead and. Uh, yeah. To the moon. Did you mention that earlier? I got to that, That's a great game on Steam. Yeah, to to the moon is definitely absolutely fantastic. The story is absolutely wonderful. Um, that is also on Steam, and if you want a good cry, it's it's definitely a very very good game to play. Um, I, I wouldn't call it, it's, it's, it's classic, but it's not a classic in terms of what we've covered here for sure. But yeah, definitely to the moon. Anyone? All right. Well, we are actually early a little bit, but I do have one more panel. Um, I have a Kingdom Hearts for Beginner panel in, in this room uh, tomorrow at 1.30 in the, in, the, in the morning. So if you guys are up and up for Kingdom Hearts, definitely go ahead and give that a shot. Um, you can uh, go ahead and contact me, you know, if you have any other questions about RPG Maker or, or just RPGs in general. Oh, okay. I mean, it's a newbie question, but... Do you need RPG Maker to play any of these games? The demos you would. Okay. The demos you would. Um, some of the fuller, the full games you do not, though, because they come packaged with an ex executable that you can just go ahead and run. It also does help to kind of have it in case the games throw an error, like it's missing a resource or something. Um, from what I know, two, uh, 2K and 2K3 aren't that expensive right now on Steam, and there are other ways to get it, but we don't advocate that here, even though an advocate actually made the uh, translation <laughs> for 2003. Um, but yeah, no, you do, not, you do not need RPG Maker to play pretty much any of these games besides the demo, the demo games. Any other questions? Sure. What version of RPG Maker would you recommend uh, getting started with? If you're make, interested in making your own games, I would definitely start out with the newest one, MV. It's very, very good. Um, if you know anything about JavaScript, it makes the scripting a lot easier. I believe it's the only one that uses JavaScript. Um, and there are also great resources out there for those, as well as it has um, a built-in character creator. It comes with the little faces and all the characters and the side view characters and stuff. Um, 2K3 is actually not bad too if you want something a little more classic, you know, something that's more like your pixel art, like the 16 bit era. Um, and that one you have to go mostly look for the resources. There is the runtime package for it, but if you really want stuff for it, you have to go looking for it. And there are plenty of resources like the Keras Project um, and other websites that have, say, like, you want to make a Final Fantasy fan game, you know? There's plenty of resources out there that have, like, hey, here's the entirety of Terra's sprite sheet, and you can pop that into the, in the system. You can pick just one. Which of these games would you say I should play? Just one. If I had to pick just one RPG Maker game out of all of these, Helen's Mysterious Castle. Yeah, it's 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 really it's short, but it's it's very very good and it really shows just the capabilities of the engine. So I would I would definitely say Helen's Mysterious Castle.
What would I recommend to someone who really liked Yumi Nikki? Um, also a fantastic RPG Maker game. Uh, we didn't really cover any games like Yumi Nikki in the panel because they're more they're not really RPG make or RPGs per se, like they're not the traditional sense of you know levels and stats and things like that, but there is stuff like Witch's House, uh, Ib. Ib is absolutely fantastic and terrifying, if you ever want to do that one, yeah. Um, IB is how you spell Ib. Um, and then, yeah, Witch's House is also very good. Mad Father is also very, very good. And I believe uh, Witch's House and Mad Father are both on Steam at this point. Uh, I don't believe Ib is, but you can always look to see if it is. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right, well, here's my contact info if you have any other questions about RPG Maker or about RPGs in general. Um, my Twitter is at Sweetie Ash. I do stream on Twitch occasionally if uh, <laughs> work isn't terrible. Um, and I pretty much do nothing but RPGs, so you know, definitely hit me up there. And I have a YouTube, it's Ashton Neko. And I want to thank you all for being here. Uh, I want you, hope you have all have a great MAGFest and a great night. Now leave. <laughs> thank you.